Brian, what is on your radar? So Joe Manchin is now complaining that requiring billionaires to end their practice of not paying any income tax is singling them out and is punitive toward them. But he's also been saying he sort of supports making sure they pay their fair share. Here's one of his key interactions yesterday with reporters. And some in the press came away from this thinking he was opposed to the billionaire's tax, while others came away thinking he was open to it. See what you think. We've said and we've all agreed on a 15 percent corporate tax. Well, people in the stratosphere, rather than trying to penalize them, we ought to be pleased that this country is able to produce the wealth. But with that, there's a patriotic duty that you should be paying something to this great country to give you the protection and the support and the opportunities. That's called a patriot. A patriotic tax would be nothing that we should be scorned about. It doesn't harm anybody. So are you supporting so the billionaire's tax? Are you supporting the I'm billionaire's supporting tax? I'm supporting basically that we do, everyone should pay their fair share. And I've just tried to think of it. it I don't like it. Uh, I, I don't like the connotation that we're targeting different people. There's people that basically they've contributed to society, they create a lot of jobs and invest a lot of money and give a lot to philanthropic uh, pursuits. Uh, but it's time that we all pull together and row together. I've got my own theory on that, and we can get into that in a moment. But one thing we do know is that he's strongly supportive of the new corporate tax that would hit companies like Amazon that tell shareholders they make a ton of money and then turn around and tell the IRS they actually made nothing, so they owe no taxes. Both Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are all for that. The new tax, an alternative minimum corporate tax of 15%, is set to hit only companies with more than a billion dollars in profits, and, would, and it would raise something like 300 to 400 billion dollars over 10 years. But as Democrats go scrambling for every last penny to pay for their shrinking agenda, it turns out they're leaving hundreds of billions of dollars on the table. The co-author of that legislation, Senator Angus King, an independent from Maine who caucuses with Democrats, told me yesterday that even though his original proposal called for the threshold to be put at $100 million, the administration wanted it pushed up to a billion. What are the biggest oppositions from your original threshold of $100 million come from? I think it came uh, from the administration, and I'm not sure why. Uh, our, our original proposal raised twice as much money. And it was a lower tax. Any rate. clue what area of the administration? I, I don't know. And you don't I, know why they said that? Uh, you want to talk to Elizabeth. I think she was involved in those discussions. I think it was Treasury. I, I don't know whether it was at ease of administration or yeah. what the motivation was, but um, I'm satisfied with where we are now, although the billion dollar threshold may be too high and maybe something in between. Uh, would make more sense and raise more money. So getting the administration down to a billion had even taken work. Their previous proposal would have put the line at two billion dollars, letting even, letting even more companies off the hook. So the original threshold of a hundred million would have applied it to roughly 1,300 companies in the U.S., while the new version hits just around 200 companies. The billion-dollar benchmark spares some of the country's largest corporations from the new tax, like defense contractor Huntington Ingalls Industries, management consulting firm Booz Allen Hamilton, airline JetBlue. The tax is modeled on the alternative minimum personal income tax, which was created in 1969 to grapple with the super-rich having figured out how to game the system and pay no taxes on their income. The AMT required they pay at least something on that. Now, many companies currently get away with paying little to no corporate taxes by writing off depreciating assets, stock, stock options for employees, and exploiting every loophole or tax credit that they've helped sneak into the code so that they have little to no taxable income or even a loss to report to the IRS despite boasting of massive gains to their shareholders. As, as just one notorious example, in both 2018 and 2019, Amazon disclosed at least $10 billion of profits to its shareholders, but paid no federal income taxes, and even collected around $130 million in refunds from the federal government both years, thanks to a series of deductions and credits. With the $100 million threshold, the legislation would have raised roughly $717 billion, according to an analysis by the Joint, Ta Joint Committee on Taxation, uh, which was shared with me by a source who was involved in these negotiations. Now, lowering the threshold to $100 million is also simply fairer. 
a company is penalized in a way from moving its annual profits one year from $900 million up to $1.5 billion the next year under this plan. It's also possible, of course, that there are House members who have privately objected to this tax and don't want the threshold coming down. They just don't want to say it and they want to hide behind the White House. But if the White House needs a few hundred billion dollars for its plan, the money's sitting right there, held by companies who ought to be paying in but aren't. And Manchin and Cinema are both on board. Might as well go for it. You know, the, the co Congress basically has a couple of weeks every decade or so when Democrats can actually legislate. So if they don't do it now, then all of these companies have just dodged a bullet and Democrats might not be able to take another crack at it for 10 or 15 years. Isn't, uh, right, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, isn't there some um, debate going on about whether this scheme would like survive Supreme Court um, scrutiny? Well, I mean, I think Social Security would uh, be, would have a hard time surviving, you know, Supreme Court scrutiny with this Supreme Court if they enacted it today. Right. So sure, like, yeah, these like Federalist Society people might try to strike down. They are, they, you know, they're, they're now politicians. Like the Supreme Court has always been political. It's becoming much more partisan. And if the Supreme Court wants to try to, uh, you know, wants to try to take over this much legislative power, yeah. The Supreme Court is our actual try. Congress because our real Congress is not actually a Congress. It's a rubber stamp for administration. As long as you have the votes in place, there's no actual. Right. Like, and, they, and they serve for life unless, uh, no, not unless, but uh, the you know, Congress can add justices to the bench. So there is a, that's the only political check kind of left on them. So I, sure, could Brett Kavanaugh say we're not going to tax corporations? I mean... I guess. Yeah. Brett, Brett Kavanaugh could say the EPA is unconstitutional. Yeah. I'm sure he'd love to. <laughs> uh, but you know, do they feel like they have the political will uh, and, and the power to do it? I, I, guess, I guess we'll find out. But I don't think, de I don't think Democrats should be legislating wondering you know, whether, whether or not Amy Coney Barrett is going is to strike something down because she could really just strike anything down. Right. But I think they're more likely to strike down something that, like a new thing, right? Just like you said, if Social Security was being proposed now, they would have, tr it's been in our DNA long enough that they have more hesitance to, you know, examine something that came into being in the long past. Yeah, I'm and, not sure how much, you know, intellectual uh, kind of uh, consistency I would suggest that they're betraying yeah. it's, it's all just politics. Because uh, under what guise would they claim that you can have an alternative minimum tax for individuals, but you can't have an alternative minimum tax for corporations? Like, sure, if they want to try to make that argument, go ahead. But it's it's just it's just it's just raw uh, class war that they'd be waging if they wanted to try to make that claim. And sure, <laughs> AM, AMT for people, but not for corporations. Like, okay, fine. I liked uh, Elon Musk's reaction to the plan because you know, we, we trolled him good yesterday. We got him. Hundred yeah. billions of oh, you talked about it yesterday. Yeah. That was right. Yeah. Use the money to get humanity to Mars and preserve the light of consciousness. Good for him. Good for Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah he can do that with his post-tax earnings. Have <laughs> have fun on the way to Mars. Yeah. I do wonder uh, what you know what loopholes billionaires will find to get out of paying. This, this is a lot of money. This is a lot yeah. of money you'd be taking from them, and they're going to find ways to get around that, too. Sure, but that's, that's the cat and mouse game. Yeah. Like that's, and, and they are going to help write the loopholes that will go into the, yep. the rule writing at the, on the Treasury side. They're going to hire. And that's the thing. Once, let's say this gets passed into law. The next phase is Treasury then writes the, the particular rules and regulations about how it's implemented. Uh, a bunch of those people will have worked for, in the past, will have worked for the, the big tax companies, uh, will be on their way back out to the big tax companies after they write these rules. Uh, and you will have an army of lobbyists yep. like pushing for how you're going to write these. So the, even though the spotlight moves away from it, the, the, fight, the fight doesn't end. But the, there, but the, the power of, of the ability to write democratically back the laws is still strong in this country. It, it, it is, you know, it meets its match for sure with the strength of the billionaire power, but that, that doesn't mean that the game is completely over. So you're right, they will get, they'll probably find ways to like pay less, but right now they're paying zero. And I'm looking forward to what's on your radar up next. <laughs>